Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the program today. With all the problems the Republicans appear to be having, we have Nevada's junior United States Senator Ray Hager has the rundown. Thanks, Sam. Today's guest is Senator John Ensign, who they say in Washington has the perfect hair. But we're going to ask him about Jack Carter, the son of the former president, who may run against him for the Senate. Mr. Carter has admitted drug use in his youth. We're wondering if this is going to be a factor in the election. And coming up on the Power Pundit panel today, Bob Fisher, Lisa Foster, and Mylon Hawkins. It's all coming up next on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Nevada Newsmakers, brought to you in part by the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the world's largest industrial park, the resort at Red Hawk, and the Peppermill family of casinos. Corporations moving to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center require reliable power, fiber optic communication, and clean water sources. And yet, there's another amenity we're very proud of here at TRI, rail service. So far, we've built over two miles of railroad track and another 3.6 is under construction. When companies need to transport freight, we're going to help them move it quickly and efficiently. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world, building economic prosperity for Nevadans. The resort at Red Hawk offers you two great dining choices. Experience David's Grill and Sports Bar or the Steakhouse at Red Hawk. The Steakhouse has received the Wine Spectator Award of Excellence based on a diverse selection of fine wines. To accompany the wines, the Steakhouse serves certified Angus beef steaks in a variety of cuts, fresh fish, chicken, and pasta dishes. For fun and casual dining, come to David's Grill and Sports Bar. David's is open seven days a week, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The resort at Red Hawk. Always the right choice. As an employer, did you know you can be held liable for negligent hiring? A background screening by Employer Links can uncover criminal records like alcohol and drug convictions. It can verify the applicant's education, driving records, and professional licenses. Employer Links can check civil records, registered sex offender records, and social security fraud. Hiring the right person shouldn't be a gamble. Call Employer Links. Ah. Employer Links, protecting your investment. So, uh, who do you use for workers' comp? Pro Group Management. Ah, I've heard some good things about them. Oh, you bet. Employee background checks, safety training, claim seminars. Oh, and here's the great part. If you have an issue, they work for you, not against you. Sounds perfect. And expensive. Well, that's the best part. They saved me 30%. I've heard they saved others 50%. Works for me. Pro Group Management. Finally, workers' comp that works for you. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And we welcome to the Newsmakers today our United States Senator John Ensign running for re-election in the year 2006. Welcome to the program, Senator. Good to be with you, Sam. All right, let's start out with uh, Harriet Myers. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, you were undecided on Myers' nomination. What are your feelings today? Well, I, I think that we have to take a wait-and-see attitude. Uh, we don't know a lot about Harriet Myers. Uh, the president does, uh, but uh, each individual senator has to make up uh, his or her own, her own mind. And I have a meeting uh, coming up, I think it's next week, with, uh, with Harriet Myers. Uh, I have a lot of questions for her. I want to see that, that uh, not only her qualifications, uh, we'll be able to, to read about those. We'll be able to read uh, and, and hear from people about uh, whether she has the right intellect and things like that. Uh, but what I want to hear is how, how does she look at the Constitution? Uh, does she look at it as the role of a judge uh, and the role of the judiciary is to interpret the Constitution instead of making laws? Uh, in, in the Constitution, it specifically states that the role of lawmakers is reserved for the legislative branch. That's the branch that I serve in, and that is not for the judicial branch. Unfortunately, for the last 50 years, uh, the judiciary has become the lawmakers in and of themselves, and that's why there's so much importance put on a Supreme Court justice uh, and, and their nomination today. Well, uh, were, were you surprised at uh, the uh, consternation amongst the right wing uh, with this nomination? Well, I, I think that it's because uh, the you know conservatives in the United States were looking for somebody that they knew something about because 
uh, too many times in the past with uh, Supreme Court justices that have been uh, put up. They were portrayed to be one way and they turned out to be a, a completely different justice once they got on the court. Uh, so conservatives were looking for somebody that they could count on uh, that they were not going to be a judicial activist. And, and uh, unfortunately, that has not been the case with the last or with several of the uh, recent nominations. You've been a great supporter of President Bush. President Bush asked you to trust him. Do you? Uh, I think that this is too big of a vote uh, just to trust uh, the president or to trust anybody else. This is something that each individual senator uh, has to vote their conscience on, and, uh, uh, and that's exactly what I'm going to do based on what I hear from Harriet Myers in the hearings as well as my private conversations with her. Senator, in, uh, in editorials in both the Christian Science Monitor and the Wall Street Journal, uh, it's been suggested that Washington insiders don't like Ms. Myers because she is not part of the Harvard Yale Law fraternity that seems to permeate Washington. She got her law degree at SMU. As a Westerner, do you see any s East Coast snootiness uh, in, as part of the factor of opposition against Ms. Myers? You know, I, I've seen a lot of criticism in a lot of different ways uh, about uh, Ms. Myers, and I think most of it is unfair, and that's why I've taken a wait-and-see attitude. Uh, I want to give her her fair day. Uh, the, the, let's have the hearing process play out. Let's, let's find out what she's really made of, uh, but don't go in saying I'm going to vote for her right away without knowing for uh, knowing about her, but don't go in saying I'm going to vote against her uh, because we don't know about her. I, I think that she de deserves uh, to go through the process and, and uh, we'll see whether uh, she deserves support at the end of the day. Okay, uh, let's get to uh, an election question here, uh, Senator, if we may. Uh, Jack Carter, who, has, uh, who may run as a, a Democrat against you, he told Ann Jeanette Damon of the Reno Gazette Journal that during the, while he was in the Navy, about 19, 20 years old, he smoked marijuana and also had tablets of LSD. Do you think this will be a campaign issue? And if he does meet you in the general election, will you use this comment against him? Well, first of all, I, he's not an announced candidate, and I don't necessarily think it's appropriate to, to comment on things that uh, he may or may have not done until he, he's, a, uh, he's a candidate. But listen, all of us have made mistakes in our past and, and uh, it's a question of whether we learn from those mistakes and, and uh, you know, whether we turn our lives around. And, and uh, I know that, that I've made mistakes when I was young, uh, you know, maybe different mistakes than he's made, but uh, that'll, that, that's, that'll be up to the voters to decide uh, if he indeed becomes a candidate. Well, Senator, respectfully, you, you talk about your youth, and so is Mr. Carter. When you were younger at any time, did you uh, smoke marijuana or drop the LSD? <laughs> no, I, I've never done anything like LSD or anything like that. But I was going to ask were, you, what was, was it like? I don't know. Yeah, no, there, there were certainly things that I did when I was a, a, a teenager that, that I regret today. Uh, and I'm trying to raise my kids in a, in a different way, being honest with them uh, and, and tell them the pitfalls of, of mistakes that I made uh, without, you know, I don't need to get any, into anything personal what I did, but I, but I certainly use... Uh, some of the examples uh, with my own children to try to steer them away from mistakes that I made. And there we'll take a break. We'll come right back with Senator John Anson right after this. For a videotape copy of any Nevada Newsmakers program, call 775-857-2244. The tapes are $20 each, including shipping. For more than a decade, the Southern Nevada Water Authority has been helping the community embrace conservation as a way of life. That includes replacing more than 50 million square feet of grass with water-smart landscaping. During the worst drought on record, watering restrictions and tough landscaping codes have reduced the community's water use by billions of gallons, even as thousands of new residents were moving into Nevada. That's smart water management, and that's our promise to Nevada. Happy Hour at the Pepper Mill.
Thanks to an ongoing commitment by America's mining companies, more than two million acres already have been reclaimed. To learn more about reclamation or other aspects of mining, visit nma.org. The National Mining Association. Island Inkjet is now open on South Meadows Parkway. Island Inkjet will refill your inkjet cartridges in just one hour. We have the ink to precisely match over 240 cartridges, saving you up to 60% on the cost of buying a new cartridge. Our work is 100% guaranteed, and contrary to what you may have heard, refills do not void any printer warranties. You don't throw out your car when it runs out of gas. Don't throw out your cartridges. Refill them at Island Inkjet on South Meadows Parkway by Smith's. And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Chad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're rejoined by Senator John Ensign. Senator Ensign Sigrug, which was on the program last week, and he spoke about how both parties seem to have lost uh, track of, of their ideology. For example, uh, the, the Democrats used to be the party of big ideas, and the Republicans were the fiscal conservatives. Would you handle the fiscal conservative side? Well, there's no question that I believe that many here in Washington and my own party have, have lost focus uh, on what I believe is the core principles of being a Republican, and that is a limited, smaller government. Uh, and, and I've been fighting for those principles up here, and I believe that uh, we should... Uh, refocus our efforts, for instance, on Katrina. Katrina is going to be a huge spending bill, uh, and in, and there are a lot of people down down there that need help. And we should use this as the opportunity to show that we are fiscally conservative and fiscally responsible to the next generation by saying that while we have to do some help down there, we're going to offset that with spending cuts in other areas. Uh, you know, there, we're putting together a package. I'm working with several other senators right now to put together a package of spending cuts to offset the spending that's going to have to happen in the Gulf Coast region. Uh, what would those spending cuts entail? Uh, we've got a whole list of things, but but uh, just just an example. Uh, we just had a vote recently on the uh, Senate floor uh, to freeze members of Congress's pay raise. It, it's a small amount of money, but it's very symbolic that we shouldn't be getting a pay raise when we have these these huge deficits. And uh, and for the first time, I think that uh, Congress is actually going to to freeze its own uh, its own pay raise. What about uh, the and I think that. And I think that all all federal employees should do the same thing this year. We should have a freeze on on or at least a a cut in the in the cola for all federal employees. Uh, we should look at uh, the entitlement programs uh, uh, as well as what are called the discretionary programs or the appropriations bills. Uh, we're proposing a five percent cut across the board uh, for non-defense uh, discretionary spending, uh, with one percent uh, in that five percent. You would have a kind of a one percent fund that the real high priority items such as veterans health care would not be cut uh, the things that really need our help right now but we should be able to go in and find enough waste in our government to be able to cut out five percent that should not be that difficult when, when you refer to entitlements which ones would you refer to you're not talking about social security are you no you're, you're looking at uh, <clears throat> there are many things that can happen in medicare right now uh, for instance uh, the new prescription drug benefit we're going to put a proposal on the on the table that has not gone into effect yet and what we can do is is we can delay it going in for a year or two. Uh, if you delay it for two years, you save $80 billion. Even by giving, for instance, today, low-income seniors that have the prescription drug discount card, allow them to keep that, and you can even double their subsidy from $600 a year to $1,200 a year, and you still save $80 billion. I think that's a fiscally responsible thing to do. And lastly, on this issue, uh, tax cuts. Are we still going to see those tax cuts go through that the President wants? Well. The, you know, the tax cuts as far as, you know, helping or hurting the deficits, remember the tax cuts helped the deficit. They actually reduced the deficit because what you did is you cut tax rates. And when you cut tax rates, that helped the economy and produced more tax revenues uh, coming into the federal government. Uh, so the tax rates and, and holding those down to make sure that businesses have more money to invest in the economy and create more jobs. When there are more jobs, there's more people paying taxes, more revenue comes into the federal government. So it's important that we have the right kinds of uh, economic policies in place that keep the American economy strong and the president's tax cuts which I voted for are a big part of that uh, economic policy. Senators, you know the uh, president's uh, approval ratings are are very low. He's got issues with uh, Hurricane Katrina, the war in Iraq, Tom DeLay, Bill Frisch. When you run for re-election next year, do you think that you would invite 
uh, Mr. Bush to Nevada to campaign on your behalf. You were there for him when he came, when Dick Cheney came here for the Social Security issue. Will the president? Will you ask the president to be there for you next year? Oh, I'd be more than honored to have the President of the United States come out and campaign for me. Uh, I think the President has been a great leader on, on many, many issues, especially the global war on terrorism. Uh, but uh, as far as uh, issues, uh, there are many issues that I disagree with the President on and, and, uh, and have been very vocal on disagreeing with him on several issues. But as far as a leader is concerned, I think he's been a tremendous leader for this country. Senator, besides uh, Har Harriet Myers, what other issues do you disagree with uh, our commander-in-chief? Well, the most obvious one has been on Yucca Mountain. Uh, we have, we have uh, gone toe-to-toe -to -toe on, on uh, many different fronts on the uh, Yucca Mountain issue and, and will continue to battle him. Uh, he, the administration has, uh, not President Bush himself personally, but the administration has been trying to go after the money, uh, the legislation that I wrote on uh, Southern Nevada public lands money. Uh, that's money that that uh, literally billions of dollars for our state uh, that we are going to try to keep in our state and and uh, senators from other states as well as the administration want to use it for deficit reduction at least that's what they say they will actually uh, the senators from other states will actually just take that money and use it for spending in their states uh, instead of actually reducing the deficit but we're going to make sure to fight the administration and other senators to keep that money at home well senator s go ahead sir. senator well senator saying all that would would it help you or hinder you if President Bush came here for your re-election bid? Uh, I'd be honored to have President Bush, and I think that uh, each candidate has to win or lose their own election. Uh, but I'd be more than, more than honored to have President Bush come into my into our state and to campaign for me. We've got about a minute left in the window here, Senator. Um, you, you're getting a lot of praise for the Ensign McCain bill that's going to reform the tele telecommunications industry. Would you give us just one highlight of that bill that's going to benefit the public? Yeah, this is a, a reform of all of our telecommunications laws to modernize them to reflect the technology uh, that is out there today. Uh, for instance, uh, consumers would have more choice on phone service. Uh, the cable companies and, and various other places could offer uh, more competition to the local phone company uh, to be able to get lower prices for your local phone service and long distance phone service. But also, you will have competition uh, for television and television programming coming into your home, and the phone companies would be able to offer and compete with the cable companies, and you'll be able to get better service at lower prices uh, if there's more competitors in the marketplace. And what we do in our legislation is we remove a lot of the barriers to new people wanting to offer more services to consumer consumers at better prices. And do you think that this is going to pass out this year? Um, we actually think that it's going to uh, be on the floor next year. Uh, it is critical that the United States uh, Congress pass this legislation uh, because we are fa falling farther and farther behind on what's called broadband deployment or high-speed Internet um, to our homes and our businesses. Uh, the United States two years ago was 11th in the world, which is unacceptable. Instead of catching up, we're now 16th in the world. Uh, just for, for anybody that has, and you'll, you'll see advertised on television, the highest speed that you can get in the United States is five megabits uh, per second. And, and uh, Senator, that, that's one of the ways that we, that we relate. Well, in Japan, the standard Sen is 100. Senator, I apologize, but the satellite window is about to close, and I don't want to cut you off the mid-sentence, which I obviously just which did. Which already did. But we welcome you back anytime. Thank you, Sarah. Thank, Thank you, you, Senator. We'll be right back on Nevada Newsmakers after this. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, just 10 minutes east of Sparks. We're proud that Walmart and other Fortune 500 companies have chosen Tahoe Reno Industrial Center to relocate their businesses. We have sites from under five acres to well over 500 acres and with all of the amenities that every successful corporation requires. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world, and we're building economic prosperity for Nevadans.
The Nevada Beer Wholesalers encourages the responsible consumption of beer. The Nevada Beer Wholesalers Association are sponsors and participants in many community-based efforts such as school education programs, Safe Ride Home, recycling programs, alcohol-free after-prom and graduation parties, safe voting campaigns, and designated driver programs. They are family-owned businesses employing 2,000 Nevadans. They also collect and pay the state excise tax. The Nevada Beer Wholesalers Association, delivering more than just beer. And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Shad. And on our Power Pundit panel today, Mylon Hawkins, uh, Vice President of Interface Computer Associates, Bob Fisher is the President and CEO of the Nevada Broadcast Association, and Lisa Foster is Deputy Chief of Staff to Governor Gwynn. Welcome to all of you. Um, I just wanted a, a quick comment from you, Bob, um, on uh, Senator Ensign's telecommunications bill. What's your thought on it? Senator Ensign has done his homework. Senator Ensign... Um, has has done just a tremendous amount of research. I mean, this is an area that he loves. This is an area that he's become an expert, and uh, we're very very pleased that uh, that we have a senator who's on the influential Commerce Committee. Um, he's doing some really good work. Uh, Ray, you want to jump in here? Well, yes, and Lisa, I had an issue for you. Is that last week, Anjanette Damon in the Reno Gazette Journal uh, wrote a story about where. The governor has a gas-guzzling SUV that he gets from a local car dealer as a trade-out. And the issue was, well, why is he driving such a gas-guzzler? But my issue was, it, why is the governor taking a free car from a car dealer? That's not a perk that any other person in state government gets. And I, I just think it's out, kind of outlandish that he takes a free car. You know, I think it's something that's always been done in Nevada, and um, I, I don't think that uh, the dealers feel that they are doing anything beyond what they do in other states. I think this is just a typical thing that happens around the country. But, but Lisa, it, okay, that car that he drives, the SUV, uh, it's got to be, what's it cost, thirty to $50,000? If you went to the governor and plopped down fifty grand, thirty grand, and said, Governor, use this in any way you want, you would probably get prosecuted by the attorney general if you could find him. But, you know, I'm, yeah, you know yeah. I, I, I've, I've got to step in here and, and say that I, I don't view that uh, uh, in the same way that you do, Ray. Um, I think that uh, this Because you're a conservative. Uh, I, I am. W depends on what the issue is. But I think that this is a donation by these uh, car companies uh, to the state. It's not to the governor personally. Right. He's not uh, accepting mm -hmm. a bribe. Yeah, but he's the, o he's the only guy that gets a free car. And when you, I go back to the public perception, the pu it's, sa it's the same way with Joe. What, what can, can I jump in on sure. this? Yes, yeah, please do. Um, I really think in a, in a case like this that a car dealer has given a car, to, given a car to the people of the state of Nevada for the governor's use. That was one less automobile that we had to buy. Absolutely. And the governor doesn't get to take that car with him when he leaves office. Yeah, but what if this car dealer wants a favor from the governor? Say, hey, Gov, I gave you $50,000. Well, you know, that's a problem that we have when people contribute to campaigns. You can ask exactly the same question, that if I contribute $2,000 to your campaign, do I own you? I, I, you know, this is a, a, a thing that we need to look at, not just with the fact that a car was given or that a plate was given or a set of dishes was given to the governor's mansion. I just think it's a public perception. It, lo it looks bad that a car dealer is giving the governor a free car. But the governor is wealthy it's enough. The it's well, the state. who's using it? But, it, but then the state, why does the state just buy one more car? And because the state issue? may not have the money, and I think the question really is, how much money did that dealership save the state? I think that, that we need to look at what was budgeted for it and what was saved. Okay, let's, I, I'd like to move on. Cause I think we, and, we, and I think most people are used to this happening for many, many, many years and view it the way it doesn't make it talking right, about Lisa. viewing it, that it does save the state. Well, I, you know, there's an honest disagreement here. Okay, okay. Judith Miller. Uh, released from jail, turmoil of the New York Times. Robert, you know, you and I were staunch defenders of Miss Miller. She spent 85 days in jail. Um, I, I, m more for me as a symbol of, uh, of, of, of needing a federal shield law, uh, but the wheels have come off this train. You think? Hmm. Yeah, it, it appears that they have, and I'm, I, I think that uh, people who are journalists and who are broadcasters may be a little a little disappointed uh, 
because we really thought we were gonna we were gonna move forward. Well, you know, the, the, this is another blow for the New York Times. I mean, the series of articles that came out this weekend show that the editor, uh, Bill Keller, uh, would not be involved in the meetings discussing Judith Miller's case because he was having to go into the newsroom and deal with reporters who were working on the actual story and he didn't want to have information that he couldn't then pass on to his reporters. This, this is crazy. I, I predict that Judith Miller will never again work for the New York Times. They don't want her around. She was the person who m misled them and led them down the road of front page stories about weapons of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. And now the, the key question that they asked her is in her notebook there was a name Valerie Flame which was close to, which was close to the Valerie outed Flame. CIA operative. But when they asked her wh who gave her that name, she couldn't recall. She had 80 days in jail to think about it, and she still can't still recall. Give yeah, me a break. Yeah, I think mm. that, that, that it really is. She may not work for another newspaper ever again, period. I mean, uh, if, if you have already uh, come up with information uh, in what is considered to be a very credible uh, newspaper, um, with the weapons of mass destruction story. Obviously that was being fed to her. Uh, obviously she was uh, in, in support of what was being given to her. And, you know, she too may be a, a victim, but there is a point where intelligent people begin to know which, which side they really have to be on, particularly in the area of journalism. Would, wouldn't you agree? I, I would agree. I, I almost think that it's like two and two equals seven. She, it looked like she was going to the mat. I mean, look at the mm -hmm. time that she served. And now? Well, I, you know, I just hope that uh, the Federal Shield Law uh, uh, bills do not get derailed in this process because it will be very unfortunate. Uh, and I don't think the whole story is out there yet. We'll be no, right back on Nevada Newsmakers. Mouthpiece for the administration. And we'll be right back on Nevada <laughs> Newsmakers after this. Nevada Newsmakers, brought to you in part by the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the world's largest industrial park, the resort at Red Hawk and the Peppermill family of casinos. South Reno's hot spot for food, fun, and friends is the Tamarack Junction. Play over 480 of the hottest slots and video poker games. Enjoy hot times and sizzling food specials at Sully's Sports Bar, Grill, and Nightclub. Watch your favorite game on one of our jumbo high-definition plasma TVs. Enjoy great food 24 hours a day in the dining car restaurant. Or sample the best hot and cold sandwiches in the Whistle Stop Deli. The Tamarack Junction is your junction for fun. South Virginia and the Body Ranch Parkway. Yeah. Island Inkjet is now open on South Meadows Parkway. Island Inkjet will refill your inkjet cartridges in just one hour. We have the ink to precisely match over 240 cartridges, saving you up to 60% on the cost of buying a new cartridge. Our work is 100% guaranteed, and contrary to what you may have heard, refills do not void any printer warranties. You don't throw out your car when it runs out of gas. Don't throw out your cartridges. Refill them at Island Inkjet on South Meadows Parkway by Smith's. And as always, remember you can watch Nevada Newsmakers online at nevadanewsmakers.com if you ever miss a show. Sam, tomorrow we have Bill Dressel. He's the president of the National Judicial College. And we have Howard Rosenberg, the effervescent Board of Regents. Let's see if we can get him going tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Not the Board of Regents, the Regents. <laughs>